So like I said at the top, our three questions for the day are, who's this for, where's this going, and what's the goal? And so to get there, let's start with a text. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 through 46. And it's a bit of a journey, so hang in tight with me, all right? After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds and power that they had seen, saying this, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If even you had only recognized on the day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. And then he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there. And he said, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple, The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him. But they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were spellbound by what they heard. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the first question for our Jesus Parade is this, who is this for? You know, have you ever walked into church or sanctuary and wondered about the story of the person sitting next to you? Well, I guess for those of you watching this, do you remember when people used to sit next to you? especially if you're watching this from your living room, your cabin, or your front porch. But, you know, every time I come to Prince of Peace, I'm wondering about the people around me, and especially when I'm in the communion line. I wonder, I wonder if they believe the same things I do about what we're up to. I wonder if they have a different story than me, you know, a different trajectory of their faith. I wonder if they believe at all or if they're just there for the ride. You know, long story short, I think that you would be surprised at uh, the variety of people in the sanctuary or in this faith community on any given Sunday. And you know what? I believe that that is good news. You see, the short list of characters that we have in the paragraphs we just read from the Gospel of Luke isn't short at all. It's actually quite impressive. And I think that that list tells us a lot about how we should think about our community today. And so let's look at that short list of people. Number one are the disciples. You see, near to Jesus are the people that have been there all along. You know, the ones that he called, invited into some specific roles in the movement. Second group of the Pharisees, you know, who are on the other end of the spectrum. You know, the religious leaders who had an interest in shutting down the Jesus March before it caused any more confusion in the religious community. You know, then there's the Romans. You know, sort of looming over the whole march in the community was the eye of the Roman Empire that could easily crush this small column of people. And in that column of people, well, the Bible calls them the crowd. You know, one of the little-known main characters of the entire Bible is the crowd. It's people like you and me, you know, folks that have left our porch to see this Jesus that folks are talking about. They're the poor, the workers, people on the margins, religiously curious. And finally, there's the zealots. You know, there were the Jews looking for a fight and hoping that Jesus was going to be the one that would throw down first. So... What can we take from this list of characters for our Jesus Parade today? Well, I think, I think that we can confidently say that not everyone was wearing the t-shirt. They didn't all know the chance. There was diversity of perspective, of perspective and of purpose. 
You know, certainly you had like the inner circle of people who felt called, led by Jesus into a particular mission, but you also had uh, Jesus making room, making room for the opposition to come in to see this new thing that God was up to. Think of Nicodemus, Zacchaeus, and others who came from out of the Jewish tradition to follow him. But then there were also the ambivalently curious Romans. And then there were the zealots, people who would feel fantastically let down by Jesus because this wasn't a march to war. And then there's the crowd, which is where most of us are. People who are tired. <laughs> people who are just getting up and going to work every day. People who take care of kids, the sick, or elderly. People with hopes, dreams, and traumas, and failures. People who caught up in the gravity of some kind of hope in Jesus' name, can't help but join the parade. In our community, our parade, our church is a place where all are welcome. And so if you've ever wondered if you are in the right place in this orbit of Prince of Peace, the answer is yes. If you've ever wondered if someone has to believe all the same things as you, the answer is no. If you have ever wondered if there is any kind of bar or hoop that someone has to jump over or through to call this place home, this movement there is the answer is no. It's no. And so the answer to our first question, who is welcome? All are welcome. Question number two, where is this going? You know, there isn't much that realtors and Bible scholars have in common other than their relentless belief in the mantra, location, location, location. So let's take a look at the ground that Luke calls us to pay attention to in his story. The first is Bethany. So Jesus' parade starts here on the eastern slopes of the Mount of Olives. It's the place where he raises Lazarus, where he's anointed with oil and where he later ascends into heaven. Second place is the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is on the way from Bethany into Jerusalem from the east, and this is packed with significance. Among the people then and Jewish people today, it is where the Messiah is expected to arrive from, to redeem Israel. People are buried facing the east in anticipation of this movement. Third is the temple in Jerusalem. You see, the temple is the place where it was understood that heaven and earth met for Jews in the first century. It was the center of the universe, and in its architecture was a replica of the cosmos as people understood it then. And so our parade goes from Bethany to the Mount of Olives to the temple in Jerusalem. What does that tell us about our movement today? Well, if you have joined Prince of Peace, somewhere in the last 20-ish years, or if you don't pay much attention to elevation when you drive, then you may not know that Prince of Peace used to be known as the Church on the Hill. So if we removed the trees uh, on our west side and all the facilities and the neighborhoods around us, then you would see that this church sits atop a bluff overlooking the river valley. You could see Prince of Peace for miles around if those things were gone, and that was intentional. The other thing that you would have noticed about the history of this place is that it hasn't always been all of the stuff that you see when you come on our campus. So you see, Prince of Peace started out as a mission start in a village south of the river between the cities and the lake country of the south in Lakeville. This was the ends of the earth as far as the cities were concerned 50 years ago. And so where is this going? Out. We believe it so much that we made it part of the tagline. We are Prince of Peace and we are moving up, in, and... You know, after all the work that we have done on our building, it can be easy to miss that reality because we have been so focused on coming here, but we are called to be a church on the move out for the world so that all might know that they are loved. If you're wondering where this work can take you, then look no further than our Planning Hope series that we just finished back in January and February. It can take you to your neighborhood or parish. It can take you to your local Feed My Starving Children. It can take you to the halls of your high school, to a counselor or a mental health clinic, and around the world to the Ukraine. We are Prince of Peace, and we are called to go out for the world. And so where is this parade going? Out. Question number three for our Jesus Parade, what's the goal? You know, the goal of the Burnsville Fire Muster a few years ago, you know, was to raise awareness and funds for the fire department. It had a point. But what's the goal of our Jesus Parade? Is it to get people into heaven, keep them from going to hell, be big? What is the goal? You know, it'd be fun to say, come back next week because, you know, Easter, resurrection and all. But 
That wouldn't be helpful for all of you, and it certainly wasn't helpful for that column of people following Jesus 2,000 years ago. And so, here goes. You know, what's the text tell us about the goal of this Jesus movement, our Jesus parade? Well, our first clue comes from the folks following, the crowd. Remember them? You know, the crowd is made up of disciples, the Pharisees, the Romans, the Zealots, the typical folks and the rest. You know, all of those folks had their own agenda, and yet all of them could be found in Jesus' train. Our second clue is in where this all ends up. It all ends up at the temple the place where heaven and earth were understood to meet in the religious imagination of the people in the first century. Now, the callback and the architecture of the temple wasn't just anywhere. It was into the Garden of Eden, the place where heaven and earth were understood to meet. More importantly, the place where all things are created, right? And so if we take those two pieces together, what do we know about Jesus' goal with this movement? Well, it seems to be the case that Jesus is drawing everyone and everything really close. Real close to a point, to a place, so that they can experience something important. All people, all perspectives, all of our brokenness, all of our sin, all of creation, he's drawing it all to himself like he is the new center of everything, a new temple, a new place where creation and newness of life can happen and flow out. You know, one of the things that I feel like ruins me whenever I'm up to preach is that I know too much about the people in the room. (laughs) I wonder, how in the world do I say something that meets everyone where they are? You know, in the sanctuary, there's people grieving, searching, in high school, in transitions of of all kinds. But, But then I remember that the bottom line of our parade is to invite them all to Jesus for a moment of new creation, an encounter with Jesus. And so what does that mean for the goal of our parade, our movement today? The goal of our existence as a community on the move in our world is to point people to Jesus. And who's welcome? Everyone. (laughs) Where is it going? Out to go get them. What is the goal? An encounter with the risen Savior. And so is that what this place is about? Is that what your faith is about? We have to consider those on this week of all weeks where we are pointing the world to that moment where Jesus makes us and all things new. And so here's my question to you. Will you join your life to this parade? Will you go on this journey with us? If so, then would you sing this next song loud? It's called Head to the Heart. And it's a song about a journey that all of us must go on with Jesus.
ideas I found your love in these open fields More than words, more than good ideas I found your love in these open fields Sing more than words, more than words 